In this video, I'm going to explain how to interpret the results of the oculomotor exam. I'm going to also introduce the treatment approaches that are used, but I'm going to save their explanations for separate videos, so make sure to check those out, and the links to those will be in the description of this video. Now remember, with the oculomotor exam, there are some tests that are more suggestive of peripheral vestibular deficits, or hypofunctions. That's what we're going to look at first. And those test results would be a positive head thrust test, a positive head shaking nystagmus test, and a positive gaze evoked nystagmus test with direction fixed nystagmus. Now remember that the gaze evoked nystagmus test has two types of results that depend on the nature of the nystagmus. The direction changing nystagmus is more indicative of a central deficit, but when it's direction fixed, that's more indicative of a peripheral vestibular deficit. Now, in general, if somebody actually has a hypofunction, the results of these tests should match up to confirm or rule up that pathology. So, if somebody has a hypofunction and you do the head thrust test and it's positive, you can't assume, but most likely, these other two tests are also going to be positive. So, they should match up with each other, and they should also indicate the hypofunction on the same side. So, it wouldn't make sense if your head thrust test indicated a right hypofunction, but maybe the other two indicated a left. They should match up in terms of being positive or negative, and if they're positive, they should also match up with the same side. So all right-sided or all left-sided, or in the rare case that they're both, all both. So if these tests are all positive, suggesting a peripheral vestibular deficit, or hypofunction, what do you do about that? What's your treatment approach? Well, in general, the treatment approach is to give an adaptation exercise. And in general, adaptation exercises are gaze stabilization exercises. When somebody has a hypofunction, there's a mismatch between the vestibular information coming from one ear and the vestibular information coming from the other. And that causes impaired gaze stabilization. So the exercises we give need to target improvements in gaze stabilization. And in general, those are these exercises right here. The most basic one, which is almost always given at the start, is the VOR times 1. Now there's a progression of that and a regression. The progression is more difficult. That's the VOR times 2. And then the regression is called gaze shifting. Gaze shifting is not given very often. There's really two major conditions where it's given. Number one, when the VOR times one is so intense for the patient that it causes severe dizziness-related symptoms that don't reduce immediately. They take a long time to come back down, and it basically ruins the person's day. Okay? So high severity, high irritability of symptoms. And then the second case it's given is when the person has such impaired gaze stabilization that they cannot keep that visual target, the X, in focus during the VOR times 1, even at slow rates. And so you have to regress it to gaze shifting. And again, we'll talk about all those in the next two videos. The next video, we're actually going to talk more specifically about VOR times 1 and VOR times 2. And then after that, we're going to be talking about gaze shifting. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding about how to interpret the components of the oculomotor exam that are more suggestive of hypofunctions or peripheral vestibular deficits. In the next two videos, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about the VOR times 1 and 2 and then also gaze shifting. And after that, we're going to go back and look at the same thing here, but interpreting the test results that are more suggestive of a central deficit. So make sure to join us then. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.